We make predictions all the time. If you, get, if you study more, then your marks go up. If you spend $20 going out to dinner, then you won't have enough money to go to the movies. These are associations that the Pearson Correlation Statistic calculates. Now the Pearson Correlation Statistic, or coefficient, tells us that there's, a, there's an association between the variables. And this relationship can be positive, negative, or non-existent. The Pearson Correlation Statistic also gives us a guide to the magnitude of the relationship. Is it strong or weak? But scatter plots and the Pearson's correlation statistic cannot help us to predict a specific exam mark from a given length of study. To do this, we need to have, or we need to do a bivariate regression and calculate the equation of the regression line. Today, what I'd like to do is cover off what bivariate regression is, talk about what the equation of a regression line is, explain and go through the SPSS output for a linear regression, explain what the standard error of prediction is, also what the percentage of variance is and what that actually means, and some of the assumptions that sit underneath a bivariate regression. Now the basic idea is that you use a set of previous collected data, such as data on variables x and y, and calculate how correlated these variables are with one another and then use that correlation and the knowledge of x to predict y. To do that, we need a regression line. Now, linear regression is a technique that uses data to produce an equation for a straight line. This equation is used to make predictions. Now, not only can you compute the degree to which two variables are correlated by computing the correlation coefficient, but you can use these correlations as a basis for the prediction of the value of one variable from the variable of another. For example, there's a fair amount of research that investigates the relationship between well-being and sleep. We decided to conduct our own study on well-being and sleep at UWS, and we got students to fill out a measure of well-being and also record how many hours they slept the previous night. I've plotted this data on this graph. So you can see that the well-being scores on the y-axis and and that the x-axis is the number of hours that you've slept. To predict mood scores from the number of hours people have slept, we have to create a regression line. Now a regression line reflects our best guess as to what score on the y variable, in this case well-being, would be predicted by a score on the x variable, in this case number of hours sleep last night. So it's a line that best fits this data. What this means is that I ensure that the distance between my line and the data points is minimized, or more specifically, the sum of squares of the errors is at a minimum. This is calculated by a technique called least squares method, and this re creates a regression line that best fits the data. So if you take all these points and try to find the line that best fits them all at once, what you see is this line here. What this means is that the line on the scatter plot is the closest on average to all the observation points. This line allows the best possible prediction of y scores, or in other words, y hat, from the knowledge of the x scores. In other words, it's the best possible prediction of well-being from the knowledge of how much you slept the previous night. So suppose I wanted to predict the well-being of somebody who slept 7.6 hours the previous night. In the diagram, I draw a line at the sleep score of 7.6 perpendicular to the x-axis. At the point where the line meets the line of best fit, another line is drawn perpendicular to the y-axis to give the best possible prediction y-hat of the person's well-being score. Now the difference between the actual well-being score, which is y, and the predicted well-being score, y-hat, is the error in prediction. Now errors in prediction are known as residuals and, and are the difference between the actual y scores and the predicted y scores. In other words, y minus y hat. Now if we take all these errors in predictions or all the differences between y and y hat, we can compute the average amount that each data point differs from the predicted data point. And this is known as the standard error of the estimate, which I'll talk about when I get to the SPSS output. Now the standard error of the estimate tells us how much imprecision there is in our estimate. 
if the correlation was perfect, so in other words, the number of hours slept perfectly predicted well-being, then all the data points would align themselves along the regression line and the residual would be zero. So as you might expect, the higher the correlation between two values and the better the prediction, the lower this error will be. So in the example, it looks like the well-being score of the person was actually 78, yet the line of best fit predicted a well-being score of 73. This gives an error of prediction for this individual that's approximately five. Errors in prediction, also known as residuals, as I mentioned before, which is the predicted score, predicted well-being score taken off the actual well-being score. And the least squares regression line aims to minimize the sum of those squared residuals. So the question remains, how can I get the equation of the line of best fit? For this, we need to turn to SPSS and do a linear regression.